ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय This man is an assassin and murderer of your own family members. Not only that, but he has also dissatisfied his master. He is but the burnt remnants of his family. Kill him immediately. Six forty. Suta uvaja evam parikshata dharma partha krishna choditaha naina chandan to guru sutam yadyapi atmana mahan. Suta Goswami said, Although Krishna, who was examining Arjuna in the religion, encouraged Arjuna to kill the son of Dunacharya. Arjuna, a great soul, did not like the idea of killing him, although Ashwatthama was a heinous murderer of Arjuna's family members. 641. After reaching his own camp, Arjuna, along with his dear friend, and charity Sri Krishna entrusted the murder unto his dear wife, who was lamenting for her murdered son. Six forty two. Tatharitam Pasuvata Pasabatam Ava Mukam Karma Jugup Sitena Nidiksha Krishna Pakritam Guru Sutam Vama Swapava Kripayanamacha. Jisuta Goswami said, Draupadi then saw Ashwatthama, who was bound with ropes like an animal and silent for having enacted the most inglorious murder. Due to her female nature and due to her being naturally good and well-behaved, she showed him due respects as a Brahmana. Text 43. Muchata Muchata Mesa Brahmanu Nitaram Guru. She could not tolerate Ashwatthama's being bound by ropes and being a devoted lady, she said, release him for he is a Brahmana, our spiritual master. Text 44. Sarahashyodhanur Vedaham Sarvi Sarugopa Sayamaha Astragramas Chabhavata it was by Donacharya's mercy that you learned the military art of throwing arrows and the confidential art of controlling weapons. Text 45. Sa esa bhagavan dronaha praja rupena vartate tasyat atmano artha patanyaste nanva gvadvira suhu krupi. He, Dronacharya, is certainly still existing, being represented by his son. His wife, Kripi, did not undergo a sati with him because she had a son. Text 46. Tad dharmagya mahabhaga pavad bihi gauram kulam rujinam narhati praptum pujam vandamba ekshanaha O oh, most fortunate one who knows the principles of religion, it is not good for you to cause grief to glorious family members who are always respectable and worshipful. Text 47. Marodhitasya janani gautami pati devataha yathaham rutta vartarstam rodim yasra mukhi muhu. My Lord, do not make the wife of Dronacharya cry like me. I am grieved for the death of my son. She did not cry constantly like me. Text 48. Yehi kopitam brahmakulam rajan nirajitatma bihi tatkulam pradahatyasu 
sanubandham sucharpitam if the kingly administrative order being unrestricted in sense control offends the brahmana order and enrages them then the fire of that rage burns up the whole body of the royal family and brings grief upon all text 49 suta uvacha dharmam nyayam sakarunam nirvyalikam samam maha raja dharma sutu ragya pratyanya dvando dvijaha suta goswami said o brahmana king yudhishthira fully supported the statements of the king which were in accordance with the principles of religion and were justified glorious full of mercy and equity and without duplicity next 50 nakulah sahadevascha yuyutanu dananjaya bhagavan devaki putro ye chanyeyascha yositah nakula and sahadev the younger brothers of the king and also satyaki arjuna the personality of godhead lord shri krishna son of devaki and the ladies and others all unanimously agreed with the king text 51 तत्र आह अमरसितो पिमह तस्त श्रेयानवतः स्मृतः न भर्तुन आत्मनाश्च आत्मनाश्च अर्थे योहन सुप्तान शिशु न वृथा भीमा हावर डिसएग्रीड विद देम एंड रिकमेंडेड किलिंग दिस कल्प्रेट हु इन एन एंग्री मूड हैड मर्डर्ड स्लीपिंग चिल्ड्रन फॉर नो पर्पस एंड फॉर नीदर हिज नॉर हिज मास्टर्स इंटरेस्ट Text 52. Nishamya bhim gaditam dropatyascha chatur bhujaha. Alukya vadanam sakhyo adhi maha hasan nivaha. Chatur bhujaha, the four armed one or the personality of God had, after hearing the words of Bhima, Dropadi and others, saw the face of his dear friend Arjuna and he began to speak as if smiling. X fifty three fifty four. Sri Bhagwan Uvaja, Bandma Bandhu na Hantavya, Atatai Vadarna, Mayevo Bhayan Matma Natham, Paripahya Nusasanam, Puru Pratisrutam Satyam, Yat Satanta Vadya Vayata Priyam, Priyam Cha Bhima Shainasya, Pandalya Mai Evaja. the personality of god said krishna said a friend of a brahmana is not to be killed but if he is an aggressor he must be killed all these rulings are in the scriptures and you should act accordingly you have to fulfill your promise to your wife and you must also act to the satisfaction of bhim sena and me text 55 sutta <coughs> uvacha arjuna sasa agyaya अरे हार्दम आथासिना मणिम जहार मूर्धन्यम द्विचस्य सह मूर्धजम जस्ट एन अर्जुना कुड अंडरस्टैंड द मोटिव ऑफ द लॉर्ड बाय हिज इक्विवोकल ऑर्डर एंड दस विद हिज स्वॉर्ड ही सीवियर्ड बोथ हेयर एंड अ ज्वेल फ्रॉम द हेड ऑफ अश्वथामा टेक्स्ट 56 उटन किलिंग पुत्र सोकातुरा सर्वे पांडवा सह कृष्णया स्वाना मृता यत्कृत्यम चक्रो निर्हणम आदि 
There, after the sons of Pandu and Dopadi, overwhelmed with grief, performed the proper rituals for the dead bodies of their relatives. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the first canto, seventh chapter of the Shrimad Bhagavatam, entitled "The Son of Drona Panch." Thank you, Hari Krishna. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Please, Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Yes. Hari Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Madhuji's wonderful recitation. See if Manu Prabhu has joined. Okay, I I do not see him joined yet. Uh, let me try to possibly reach reach out to Prabhuji. Please bear with us. the rhythm of it. so we are reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 7 verse number 40 suta vacha evam parikshata dharmam partakshena kodita naichadantam guru sutam yatya atmahanam mahan <coughs> Shuta Goswami said, although Krishna was examining Arjun's religion, encouraged Arjun to kill the son of Dronacharya, Arjun, a great soul, did not like the idea of killing him, although Ashwatthama was a heinous murderer of Arjun's family members. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namaskritya naram chayipa narutamam devim sarasatim vyasam tato jayam udiriyet nasta prayasu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevayam bhagavati uttama shloke bhakti bhavati naishtiki <coughs> Om Agyanam timrindaks gyanam jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guru venamaha Shri Chaitanya Amano Vishtam Stapitam Yenam Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapatantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Dagrajatam Sagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Tadvaitam Tavadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Vadam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishmanu Sute Devi Mami Hari Priye, Mancha Kalpata Rubyascha, Irma Sindhu Vebacha, Patitanam Pavnebio, Vaishnavebio Namonamaha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi, Gaura Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we all know the pastime that is going through at this stage in Srimad Bhagavatam, how this Aswatthama has killed innocent children of the Pandavas while they were sleeping. Hence, he has been condemned. Uh, and, and he has been, it has been addressed here that he was a heinous murderer of Arjuna's family members. <clears throat> now, uh, Shri Prabhupada has um, 
put a very nice purport to this. And he's saying that all that Krishna wanted personally, Krishna was emphasizing on this point that Arjun should kill this murderer. Hmm? And then towards the end, we can see that how Prabhupada is saying that Arjun outwardly encourage Arjuna, Krishna encourage Arjuna outwardly to test Arjun's sense of duty. It wasn't that Arjun was incomplete in his sense of duty, nor was Lord Krishna unaware of Arjun's sense of duties. It's a very, very nice and important word, sense of duty. And I was just meditating upon this past time, that how when Arjun held uh, captive Aswatthama, he brought Asatama back to the camp where <clears throat> Draupadi was there. And we all know that Draupadi wanted head of Asatama at that time when she found out that he has killed her own children. So now when Asatama came in, uh, bounded by Arjun, she felt love of compassion for him because she felt that um, mother of Asatama will feel a similar pain as she was feeling herself by the murder of her own children. And because Asatama is son of their guru, Dronacharya, she didn't want to commit a, a crime in her own mind of murdering a Brahmin. <clears throat> she, was seen, she, was, she was sympathetically looking at the situation. And then when Draupadi um, said that we should not kill him. Um, Yudhishthir Maharaj also echoed the same opinion, thinking similar things that, yeah, we should not kill him. Nakul and Sahadev also felt the same thing. Out of the five brothers, only one brother who was Bhima, he said, no, we should kill him. <clears throat> at this point in time, at this point in time, Krishna, appeared to Arjuna in his four-armed form, four-armed form, and he said to Arjun that you must kill this aggressor because although he appearing to be a, he's appearing to be a Brahmin, but he is murderer, he's an aggressor, and he has, he has killed innocent children. Therefore, Arjun, do not think, just kill this person. At this point in time, Krishna inspired Arjun to think of a way so that Arjun do not have to take his life away. But at the same time, Arjun should punish him in such a manner that he feel as if he has been killed. That feeling of being murdered was more important. And therefore, Arjun shaved his head off and Ashwatthama was blessed with the very, very powerful money on his head, on the forehead. And Arjun pierces his head, pierces this uh, money or gem out of his head. By doing so, Asatama felt powerless and all his um, aura went away. He became absolutely weak <clears throat> and very embarrassed as if he has been killed. And this was the way that Arjun fulfilled his duty and fulfilled Krishna's order. So this sense of duty is a very important word in the purport. And I was contemplating this <laughs> sense of duty. How, how can it translate in our lives? Krishna has already provided one, one ashram system. If you look at Bhagavad Gita 4.13, Chatur Varnam Maya Shristam Guru Karma Vibhaga Shaha. Hmm. Apimam. Vidhi akartaram abhayam. Krishna is saying that there are four varnas and there are four ashramas. And these are created by me. The God himself is claiming that in the social order, he has created four ashrams. And we know them. Brahmachari ashram, Grasta ashram, Vaniprastha ashram, Sanyas ashram. And he has created for Varnas, which is, we also know that, Shudras, then <clears throat> Vaisyas, then Kshatriyas, and Brahmanas. Like this, there are four Varnas, four Ashrams, and there's a perfect 
uh, arrangement or a structure of a society. Everyone is driven by the sense of duty. Now from chapter 18, we also understand that spiritual life is based on mode of goodness. There are three modes of material nature, Tatogun, Rajogun, Tamogun. Now, <clears throat> in Rajogun and Tamogun, one is driven by the mode of passion, wherein one is driven by or motivated by the results. Hmm? What are these results? These results are nothing but um, one wants to uh, enjoy the senses. Bhog, bhog yoni. He wants to enjoy the senses to the results of their activities. And that is what motivates them. And that is more of passion. What is the result of such activities? The result of such activity is it appears to be very, very nice, like nectar in the beginning, but towards the end, it becomes very poisonous and one becomes extremely miserable. So those who are driven by the mode of passion, running after the results of their activities, uh, namely name, fame, specifically wealth. Everybody's running around to make more wealth. <clears throat> when they achieve those results, they are not satisfied. You put as much as he you want into the fire, the fire will become big. In the similar way, this whole motivation driven by the result leads one into insatiable desires, loop of desires. This loop keeps going on in the reservoir of desires, which is nothing but our mind. In the mind, these desires are produced and they are never fulfilled. One living entity goes, fulfill one desire, it, it gives rise to five more. And those five give rise to many, many more. It's like an insatiable ocean of desires. And that desire, living entity completely drowned, completely get drowned. And he goes into the entanglement of death, birth, old age, disease, like that, millions and millions of lifetime, he keeps going into that. And that is a result of mode of passion. What to talk of mode of ignorance? Mode of ignorance is not even worthy of discussion because it will just lead one to the state of state of complete numbness, madness, suicide, hurting them themselves, in the state of uh, unconsciousness by taking drugs, all kinds of uh, illegal means they adopt to somehow um, put an end to their conscious being. So this is mode of ignorance and mode of passion, but mode of goodness, mode of goodness, is described as dry grass. You put fire to dry grass, dry grass will burn. Mode of goodness is the minimum requirement for spiritual life. Now in mode of goodness, one is what is the motivation in mode of goodness? Is it the result? <clears throat> is one thinking about how to make one billion pound? And then one is trying to drive their activities to, to ensure that what mechanism shall I now put into place so that I can get one billion pound? No, mode of goodness is based on sense of duty, sense of duty. I must do it because I'm supposed to do it. I must do these activities because this is how it has to be done. Now, what is the motivation? The motivation is mode of goodness, the sense of duty. Where is it driven from? The sense of duty is driven from the varna and ashram that one is based in. If somebody is a Brahminical, his sense of duty would tell him that he must study Shastra. He must share this knowledge. He must be selfless. He must be tolerant. Uh, he must be austere. He must obtain the knowledge and realize that knowledge and give that knowledge to others. That is a Brahminical sense of duty. If one is, so <clears throat> he's trying to understand who is he. A Brahminical person would always be very, very satisfied with it and will be acting in such a way that he can realize God and he can help others to realize God in such a way that everybody, he, he will guide everybody into activities which will align all those daily mundane activity to the supreme goal of going back to Godhead. Kshatriyas, on the other hand, they will feel themselves to be like arms of the society, protect people because they give protection, because they are very powerful. They also have the right to take taxes from people and that way they can make their own living and become 
in administrative class, they can become like kings or administrators and protect the country, protect the citizens. They also protect the Brahmins. But because they're very powerful, they are like arms of the body. <clears throat> However, they are governed by the head of the body, which is Brahmin. This is the sense of duty of a Brahmin, of a Chatriya. Similarly, Vaisyas commit themselves to, to do mercantile activities and Sutras commit themselves to serve the other three communities. Uh, they, they are governed by the inner desires of who they are. Today's uh, generation or today's times, everybody is wanting to become something that something should be able to make a good living. And that good living is defined by how much salary, pay package, money they would earn and have the bank balance in the future. So little children are forced into studying things that they may not like, or they are forced into activities that their nature is not like that. And later they end up suffering because they may have money, but they do not have what they like to do. Hence, they work against their natures. And when one works against the nature, they will not have the sense of duty because their sense of duty should be governed by their own nature. But if they do not have the nature or they do not follow the nature, how can they have the sense of duty? Hence, everybody, everybody in the mundane world has a cooking approach. Go to this college, go to that university, study this subject, and that's how you can make money. And this keeps changing. Sometimes there's a wave of computers. Other times there's a wave of digital marketing. Other times there's a wave of something else. Technology. And everybody's running or banking or finance or whatever it is. They're running. Whether or not they fit into that, that's a secondary process. Somehow or other, they're forced to pressurize themselves and get into that kind of uh, slot. Somehow or the other, they've got to fit into that slot, at least outwardly, and get to the position where they can make a lot of money. And that making money is a mode of passion activity. Ultimately, that will lead one, if they're not acting into their own nature, they can still make money if they're working in their own nature, through their own nature. But if they don't, <clears throat> they will have to suffer. They'll have to suffer. So we understand this very scientific system of Chatur Varna Maya system. I am the doer of that. I have made this Chatur Varna Maya system. That actually drives the sense of duty for the entire society. The society is now topsy turvy because there are hardly any Brahmanical qualities because Brahmins, they will, they will live on their own uh, with minimum material requirements. But such people are no more existing. Everybody wants to have the, the best available um, material uh, comforts and enjoyment. Hence, the Brahminical class is degraded into the other, other two classes. Even Kshatriyas are not available. <clears throat> Brahminical and Chatriya culture is degraded into mercantile or Vaisya community and Sudra community. And I it is said in Shastra, Kaliyuga, Shudra, Sambhava. Most of the people in Kaliyuga will be Sudras. So, um, so this is the sense of duty. Other sense of duty that, uh, that can come is through the Shastra itself. What is the sense of duty is, is actually when living entity gets knowledge from Krishna, from his, his literature, from the Puranas, the, the, the Vedas, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, then one gets the sense of duty. Okay, this is Dharma. Krishna's uh, Dharma to Sakshat, uh, Dharma to Sakshat, Bhagavad Pranito. Whatever Krishna says is Dharma. Now, for Arjun, it was Dharma to kill Ashwatthama. Although killing Ashwatthama independently could be seen as something which is not dharma. But because Krishna is saying, you do it, then you do it. And then that is dharma. Similarly, we see many examples and instances where it may look contradictory, but because God is asking for it, Krishna is saying, do it, then this is dharma. Similarly, we see that we have Manu Samhita. Srila Prabhupada has spoken about Manu Samhita many times in many lectures. And he says, Manu word is coming from Manushya. Manushya and Manu the first man who has given us the law of this universe, Manu Samhita. That's called Manu Samhita. According to Manu Samhita, he has mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. I'll open this page. In, in this Bhagavatam, 
uh, purport, here Prabhupada is mentioning 6 to 16. He's mentioning that Manu Samhita is said, if a man kills somebody, then he should also be killed, hmm? hanged to death. Why? It is said that if that man is not hanged to death for killing a murder, for becoming a murderer, killing innocent people, then in his next life, he will have to suffer massive reaction to prevent him suffering from the massive reactions of murdering somebody, it is best that a king or the law of the country should hang him to death. And that is seen as king's mercy. Life for life. So now Sri Prabhupada made a pitch here. Now imagine how many lives we are killing every day. He's talking about animal killing. We have now become very civilized. We are maintaining slaughterhouses, thousands and thousands, up-to-date machines, how to kill the animals. This is advancement of civilization, and they are all sinful activities. Babani. Babani. Not only killing, there are many institutions how to cheat, how to kidnap others' wife, how to play money tricks. So all sinful activities. And this is called modern material life. So um, therefore, we see that uh, because people do not, uh, are not driven by the sense of duty governed by either ch chapter one and, uh, and ashrams or governed by the literature spoken by God himself, the society is completely degraded. And yet another lecture Shri Prabhupada is mentioning here, it can be quite controversially seen, but when we understand the full picture and we can understand this point, what Ed Manu Samhita is mentioning here. Hmm? Manu Samhita is mentioning that Naistriyam Satantram Arhati Manu Samhita 9.3. Now we have to read this full because if you just read one line, we'll say, oh, what is this? <laughs> and Prabhupada is has been asked by the press many times. It says woman should not be given independence. Now, uh, let me just read this as best to do what Prabhupada is trying to say here. He, Manu gives the law that women should not be given independence. Then, what should be the life? The life should be so long, she's not married, she must live under the guidance and dependent on the parents. As soon as she's married, she should live dependent on her husband. And the husband is gone out because according to Hindu system, the husband does not remain at home for all the days till death. No, when children are grown up, he gives up wife and children and becomes a sannyasi, just like I have become. I have my children, I have my grandsons, I have my wife, she still exists, but I have given up all connections. So how my wife is being maintained? Oh. She has got grown-up children. So there is no anxiety. So dependent is dependence is not bad. If there is dependence on the proper place, no father neglects to look after the comfort of an unmarried girl, of his unmarried girls and boys. According to Hindu system, a father-mother responsibility ceases after he gets the children married either daughter or son, so much obligation, then they are free. So dependence, I'm speaking on the dependent. So dependence is not bad. Surrender is not bad. I have seen practically women surrendering to the husband. Still, there are so many women in India. They're happy, so happy, and their life is so glorious. So we have to learn how things are to be done. Independence, artificial independence, is no good always. Practically, we have no independence. So now he's talking about living entities and not just the gender. He's saying, I may think of independence, but practically I have no independence because I'm servant of my senses. So then there is a shloka from Bhakti Rasamri Sunda, English translation. I'll read this, very important. Oh my Lord, there is no limit 
to the unwanted orders of lusty desires. Although I have rendered these desires so much service, they have not shown any mercy to me. I have not been ashamed to serve them, nor have I even desired to give them up. O oh, my Lord, O oh, head of the Yadu dynasty, recently, however, my intelligence has been awakened, and now I'm giving them up due to transcendental intelligence. I now refuse to obey the unwanted orders of these desires, and now come to you to surrender myself at your fearless lotus feet. Kindly engage me in your personal service and save me. So, um, it's very wonderful uh, philosophy and way of living that Srila Prabhupada has given to us. Uh, he has emphasized on aggregarian community where people produce off the land, look after the cows and bulls, have an education system which leads one to the perfection of life in mode of goodness, the aim of human life to go back to Godhead, to achieve Krishna's love and be dependent, completely dependent on Krishna as opposed to completely independent and depending upon senses, mind, and material energy. So this is the beautiful philosophy. Today is the last day of Karthik, and we are all celebrating the very last day of offering the lambs to Sri Sri Radha Damodar. It's a perfect opportunity that we can pray to Sri Sri Radha Damodar, and we can be depending upon them for all of our uh, all of our desires, for all of our needs, for all that what we have, uh, we can completely depend upon Sri Sri Radha Damodar. We, pray, we can pray to them that we get driven by the sense of duty in mode of goodness as opposed to motivation coming from the fruits of our results and completely in mode of passion so that uh, we, can, we can have association of elevated devotees who can guide us, hold our hands, and guide us to the next step in our spiritual life of, of being dependent on Krishna and just embrace Krishna consciousness in that way. So I would like to finish this session here today. If there's any question or any chat or any comment, either we can write on the chat or we can speak on the, on the Zoom here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay, dear devotees, if there's no question or comment, I look forward to our next session together next week. Thank you very much for coming and being present here. I would like to offer all of you my humble obeisances. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very wonderful class, Manu Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji, for nice class. Thank you.